How you guys doing? How you guys doing? Hopefully, happy Wednesday. Um, hopefully, like, like I always say, hopefully, you guys are doing good, straight, amazing, staying safe, staying safe from COVID, stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty crazy. But anyway, all these new variants, shit like that, man. Hey. But um, continue to stay safe, continue to wash your hands, eat right. Hopefully, you guys are doing absolutely splendid, wonderful. But now, we have Andre, Andre Mada. Hopefully I said that right. F1's worst teams. Shout out to former Podcast One. And shout out to the sub with their recommendations. How bad can you be? How bad can you be? Uh, every time I look at worst teams, I always go back to Rich Energy. I always refer back to Rich Energy. Damn dudes were the worst. But anyway, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to like the video and sub as well to the channel. And without further ado, you know what time it is. Let's get started. 1991 Formula One season. It was a season where the great Ayrton Senna. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. He's a 19. What? So, the 1991 okay. Formula One season. It was a season where the great Ayrton Senna would win his third world championship with McLaren. Rest in peace. A star was born in the name of Michael Schumacher, and the sport would say goodbye to one of its most prestigious and loved teams. Seven, no in Colony Racing. Colony yeah. were a team like no other, starting an incredible 14 Grand Prix out of 82. Damn. And scoring some fantastic <laughs> results as well, like, um, uh, like... Retire, retire. Re I'm, I'm looking at Gabriel Tarkini. Retire, 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 14th, 8th. Did not DMP. Oh my gosh. A lot of these guys didn't even qualify. Oh my gosh, this team was god awful. What the hell? Look how many DMPs there are. Hold up. Is DMP Q? They got this. Did not qualify. They did not. P did not. What the fuck? Excuse my language. I think I, I'm overthinking this, but if DMPQ, that means they got disqualified and, and qualifying? How? Look, <laughs> let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, maybe not. So, Coloni didn't really make the mark they intended to in Formula 1, but there's no way they can go lower than that, right? Surely not. In September 1991, Colony was saved by Italian Andrea Sassetti. Now, who was this guy? That's a very good question. Sassetti was a fashion designer for women's shoes. Think Alpha Tauri, just a little bit more shit. Now, you'd think to make your mark in Formula 1, you'd maybe want to snipe some of the top engineers off the grid. Maybe from a Williams, or a Ferrari, or a McLaren. Well, Sazetti thought otherwise and decided that some of his workers through one of his shoe factories would make perfect Formula 1 engineers. <laughs> like we've just started and you already can't make this up, can you? The team would be named Andrea Moda and start with an all-Italian driver lineup, acquiring the services of veteran backmarker driver Alex Caffey and Coloni's 1989 driver Enrico Battaglia. However, this lineup would last about as long as we thought Rich Energy were a credible company. <laughs> Sazetti and Andrea Moda would have... So... <laughs> So these guys was a Italian based team to my to my understanding, like you say. Off buddy who designed women's shoes. It's pretty cool. Um Ah oh, Jesus Christ. Alright. Alright, let's uh let's uh, keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. It arrives the first race of the 1992 season with a modified Coloni car but they'd be barred from competing by the FIA. At the time, there was a rule where all new teams had to pay a $100,000 deposit in order to begin racing. Sazetti, being the F1 god that he Please is, thought, do it. yeah, I, I won't need to pay that. And so he just rocked up to the first race and expected to compete. Sazetti <laughs> argued that the team was still the Colony outfit for the previous year. Though the FIA didn't buy that and told him to piss off and come back with $100,000. This ineptitude on a team management front obviously frustrated both drivers, Caffey and Batagia, leading them to criticise the running of the team. Sazetti responded to this by calling both drivers into a room and telling them to get fucked. Now without drivers, Sazetti went about finding two more, who eventually went with another ex-Coloni racer in Roberto Moreno 
and rookie Perry McCarty. When the team arrived in Brazil for round two of the season, their cars weren't even finished yet but that wouldn't matter anyway. In yet another case of the team being underprepared, Renault would fail to qualify and McCarthy would be barred from entering due to not even having a super license to be able to race. McCarthy would later acquire this super license but both cars would still fail to qualify for the next two rounds in Spain and San Marino. Now, around this time one of Andrea Moda's original drivers, Enrico Battaglia, came back with about $1 million from sponsorship money. Zetti, being the money-loving businessman that he was, was very willing to forget the fair's feud in the past and set about okay. replacing. Mc All right, so quick question: So, if you're not able to like, to, like, qualify for like a race, do you just like do you still stay at that like? So, if you wasn't able to qualify for Monaco, right, and next week was at Ab Abu Dhabi, and if you could qualify for like Monaco, do you just you know? Like, do you just like? Do you just get like a zero? I'm like I'm assuming you just get zero points for that for that race just in general, because since you ain't qualified, you can't compete, which is pretty embarrassing. I I'm I'm not going going going. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If you can't qualify, that's embarrassing. That's just me. Obviously, there are like in these guys' case, in these guys' case. First off. You, you don't even have cars ready. It seems like the crew is not even probably not even there. You're firing people, stuff like that, because they're talking back at you. You know what I mean? You get but but right here doesn't even have his super license. So I don't know how he's even racing. What you do? Make like what you do? Fake an ID or some shit. And then after that, you know, you can't see like I said, can't get DNS stuff like that. You, so. Like I said, back to my back to my point, which I was asking, do you just so I'm assuming you just get zero points for that race, and then you just gotta just get ready for next week, which sucks. McCarthy with Batasia, however, the FIA. You, I'm sorry, but you because you're spending all that time to get ready for the race, then for you to not qualify, who? That's tough. It would block this move, deeming Sazetti to be making too many changes to their driver lineup in too short a space of time. This would naturally enrage Sazetti, but who would he hold to blame for all this, you ask? Maybe the FIA or F1? <laughs> no, he blamed Perry McCarthy. I'm sorry, what the fuck? For the rest of the season, Sazetti treated McCarthy in a way that would make Red Bull's treatment of Daniel Kvyat look like them bowing down to the Messiah but we'll get onto that a little bit later. The team would rock up to Monaco, but in an incredible turn of events, Moreno would actually qualify for the race. What? Could this be a turning point of Andre Moreno's season? Could Moreno finish? Could he even score points? Well, no. Moreno's engine, so shocked to have the opportunity of taking part in a race, decided to blow up just 11 laps into the Grand Prix. But incredibly, Andrea Moto's only race appearance wasn't the main story around the team that weekend. That lied with McCarthy's car. In pre-qualifying, to say McCarthy's time was slightly off the pace would be, well, a bit of an understatement. Michelle Alboreto would lead the pre-qualifying time sheets with a 125.413. McCarthy set the official lap time 15 and a half minutes slower. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. At the Canadian round, the team showed up, but very quickly they- Fifteen and a half minutes. Slower. What? How? Does the FIA not test the cars? Bef like, how is that- how is that allowed? I got so many questions. I'm. <laughs> <sighs> there was a problem. They didn't even have an engine. Our main man, Suzetti, had failed to play engine supply Judd, but luckily we were able to borrow an engine from Brabham. Yet, despite all this, the team was still woefully slow when both cars failed to qualify for the race once again. By this point, all of Andrea Moda's sponsors had decided to pull out, and to be honest, who could blame them? This left Suzetti to fund the team on his own and 
Well, you can guess how well this is going to go, can't you? McCarthy's crappy treatment would continue into the British Grand Prix, where, on a perfectly dry track, Zazetti thought it'd be funny to send his driver out on full wet tyres. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Just sabotage. <laughs> Come on. That's sabotage. And if he didn't think Zazetti's treatment of McCarthy could get any worse, in Hungary he'd block his driver from leaving the pits until there were just 45 seconds left in the session. And even nowadays, cars wouldn't be able to get around the track in that time. Like... Come on, this is childish now. Things would get serious in Belgium, however. Oh, Sassetti noticed that there was a broken steering component in Moreno's car, so thought to himself, hmm, I wonder who likes broken steering. <laughs> oh, I know. However, after swapping parts on Moreno and McCarthy's car, McCarthy would suffer an incredibly scary accident at the top of Radion, which could honestly have cost him his life. Yeah, this isn't funny anymore. At this point, the FIA had had enough, wanting to expel Sazetti and his team from the championship. However, Sazetti was nowhere to be found in the paddock. Why, you ask? Well, by this point, Sazetti had been arrested for allegedly forging invoices for car parts. Like, I know, this just couldn't get any worse, could it? Well, turns out, yeah, yeah, it can. Sazetti's money used to buy the Formula 1 team in the first place was obviously called into question. And even nowadays, we don't really know where it all came from. At one point, there were even links to the Mafia. And there's even a documented case of a gunman shooting at Sazetti after one of his nightclubs mysteriously caught fire. Huh. The real source of money is likely to remain a mystery, but Andre Meadow would show up to the next race in Monza, only to be told to go and do one by the FIA. They would not return for the 1993 F1 season, and the name later was used as one of Euro Motorsport sponsors in kart that year. Perry McCarthy would never race in Formula 1 and was deemed the unluckiest racing driver of all that time, sucks. but he would end up finding fame portraying the Stig on Top Gear, so there's that. So, were Andre Moda one of the worst F1 teams of all time? Well, they're certainly yeah. up there, and in fact, to call them an F1 team at this point, it's practically an insult to the sport as a whole. They were woefully slow and ran by a potato who let his childish morals rule his head and that could have led to some really serious repercussions in Belgium 1992. But yeah, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you do leave a like. I feel bad for McCarthy because he basically got effed. He, he got fucked every race, basically. I mean, like... And then the top, was it? Zanetti was basically, was giving what? A broken steering wheel? was just, he treated him like crap. You hold him in the pit lane for like 45 seconds, stuff like that. I would have been quit if I was McCarthy. Oh my, oh my God. She basically, this man basically effed up McCarthy's whole career. It's as simple as that. I don't give a crap. You affected one man's whole career. You sabotaged one man's whole career. Then you raise, you know, you know, you faking stuff, you get shot by the mafia, you got arrested. I don't know how they was able to let this slide, man. <laughs> I don't know how the FIA let this slide, man. Freaking exchange engines, dude, they have engines. We didn't even hear about no freaking crew, no, no team, no, where is like, you know, the, that crew chief, whatever, the top guys, where is the supporting cast? It just seemed like it was a net team and two drive and, and just the two drive, two, three, four drivers, whatever. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. If I was McCarthy, I would have beat, beat his ass. No cap. But anyway, this is the worst team ever. You guys will get like a sub. Come that play guys, thoughts to me, guys. We'll see you guys later.